Good morning, everyone. Welcome to South Shore United Church and our third Sunday in Advent. Special greetings to visitors, and there's piles of visitors here, so we welcome you all, extended family who are here, especially the extended family of Elsie and Harley, and we welcome those joining us online. We are glad to have you a part of our community. The bulletins today are given in loving memory of Marion Morrison, David McCachran, and Kim McCachran, remembered by Charlene McCachran. They are also given in loving memory of Bernard Harmon, remembered by David and Cindy Harmon and family. And the large poinsettia that beautifies our sanctuary has been shared in loving memory of Ronnie McLeod, remembered by Norma McLeod. You might have noticed on your way in that there were some ropes across part of the walkway um, to the outside of the church. Our main entrance is blocked right now, and that's because the concrete pad and steps have um, experienced a lot of deterioration, and they're not safe. So we have that um, marked off right now. We do have a project in the spring that will all be repaired, but for the winter, it will just be roped off and you can all use the ramp entrance because that makes a lot less area for us to have to clean when the snow comes so just a heads up on that we have some special services coming up this week on thursday night at seven o'clock as long as we do not have stormy weather which it's right now forecasting we will see watch the facebook page and listen to the radio that's where announcements will be if we have to cancel but this year it's at the dixon family farm and any young people who wish to participate parents just let me know so that i'll make sure i have enough costumes Next Sunday morning, we have an all-ages service for the early morning service at 10.30 and 7 o'clock in the evening. The choir has been practicing really well, and they have a beautiful array of songs to share with you as we go through the Christmas story. And choir practice, Christmas choir practice, is Tuesday night if you wish to join us, and we'll be practicing here in the sanctuary Tuesday night to prepare for Christmas Eve. There are other announcements in there about uh, our building hours as we strive through the winter season to conserve heat. And there are many other announcements I would invite you to read through on your pretty green insert page. So take that home with dates and information for you about the giving tree and all of those things. As we gather to worship, we remember that we have a treaty of peace and friendship with the Mi'kmaq people of Epiquit. That's Prince Edward Island, which is unceded Mi'kmaq territory. And we commit, as people who live here, to learn to live in love with respect, to build the hope that we may learn to live together in peace and friendship with everyone who finds their home in this place. We're going to call one another to worship God, and I ask you to say the parts that are in bold print. It's in your bulletin and also on the slides. The Spirit of God is upon us, for God has chosen us all, sending us to share loving messages with the poor, asking us to heal those who are hurting, and challenging us to bring freedom to captives. Let us sing for joy and let praise roll out of our souls. This Christmas time, we have been chosen. We are all God's servants. There is a song I wrote a number of years ago, Come One and All, and let us sing an angel song of trust and joy.
Some of us like to lift our voice in song and feel God close that way. For other people, it's when they say prayers. So I invite you to unite your voices with mine as we share together in prayer. Without you, God, our joy is a bit like a messed up recipe for Christmas cookies. All the ingredients might be there, but we won't put it together in a way that works somehow. Be with us in this time we share and mix us all together with your loving kindness. Fill our hearts with your joy that lifts up those around us. Soak us with your promises of worth and goodness. Shape us into your earth-bound angels that we may sweeten this world by our presence. For we continue to pray as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For our candle lighting, we are pleased to have Aerith, Ashley, and Lindsay lead us in this candle lighting time. Two weeks ago, we talked about hope, how we wait for things to happen, trusting God is working with us. So we relight our first candle to remind us God's hope is shining for us. Last week, we talked about practicing being peacemakers. When we do, God's light shines through us into the world. So we relight the second candle to show God's peace is here. This week, we light the third candle, which is pink. It is a color for joy. When we look at this candle, it reminds us to allow God's joy to fill us. Joy builds when we sing together and pray, when we look at beauty around us and soak up its goodness. Joy grows stronger when we tell stories to help each other and when we share laughter. These candles are symbols of all God is giving to us today. May our peace, hope, and joy be renewed each time we look at them. Our candle lighting hymn is Hope is a Star. you to look around and see if you can see some special figures in our windows and on the top of our tree. What do you see? Angels. 
angels, yes, there are angels. Angels are a big part of our Christmas story. And there's a special angel I want to tell you about today. The angel is named Frank. Do you think it's Frank? No. Frank might be an angel for us in the choir, but Frank wasn't the angel in the Christmas story. I wonder what the name of that angel might be. You've got it. Yes, Gabriel. Gabriel was the name of the angel, and Gabriel went to visit a very special woman. Do you know the name of the woman? Well, baby Harley's pretty special, and so's his mom and dad. But it's Mary. You all got it. So Angel Gabriel came to Mary, and at that time, Mary lived not in Bethlehem, but in a place called Nazareth. And Mary was doing her chores, and along came this angel Gabriel. And Gabriel said, Greetings, Mary. You are blessed. Mary thought, this is weird. I don't understand what this means. And she looked a little confused. And Gabriel said, don't be afraid. It's okay. I am here to tell you that God has a very special gift that God wants to give you. God wants to give you the gift of a baby, and you are to call this baby Jesus. Mary thought, mm, I'm not sure about that. And Gabriel said, it's okay. Trust God can help you with this. God will be with you and name this baby Jesus. Mary thought and she thought, and what do you think she said? Did she say, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want that gift. Mary said, yes. Yes, she said, I will do what God wants. I will accept that gift of a baby. And so when the baby began to grow in Mary, she went to visit Elizabeth, who was her relative. Because Elizabeth was a whole lot older than Mary, and she too was pregnant. She was expecting a baby as well. And Mary went the long journey to her house, and she went to the door and went inside, and she said, hi there. And Elizabeth said, oh, Mary, I'm so excited and so glad to see you. In fact, the baby inside me is happy too because he just kicked for joy because he heard your voice. You are a very special mom, and I'm so glad you came to visit. Mary was so filled with joy at Elizabeth's word that she sang out a song, I am blessed, I am special just like you, and I am so glad that God has given me this gift. I sing for joy because of this gift. Mary stayed for three whole months with her relative Elizabeth, and they shared a lot together. Now, a long time ago, I had some Sunday school students who made angels to be shared. And we shared some, but not all of them were able to be shared. So I would like to share with all of the families around an angel that you can put on your tree to remember our Christmas angels. So, how about you help me take them around and make sure families all, so one to a family, one angel to a family, if we can do that. Can you take some around? Here you go. Great. Okay. You find some families. We're going to share our angels. Can you share another one? Take it around. There, did you find somebody else? Okay, go around, and I have one more to take and share. Okay, that's all we have, so we'll share there. Okay, we are now going to move to another special time, and this time is called baptism. So, for baptism, you know what? Baptism is a time of joy. Because it's a time in our church that we remember 
every child is a special gift from God. And moms and dads have said, yes, God, we accept this special gift. And they bring their children to say, God's love is with us. So we remember we all are surrounded by God's love. And baptism is a time we share that joy as a whole church family, that babies don't just belong to the moms and dads and their siblings. Babies belong to the whole church family and to God. So we bring them in promise to support each other. And what do I use in baptism? We use something special in baptism. That's right, we use water. And I wonder, why do we use the water? Can you help me? Yeah. The water reminds us that God is a part of us. God's spirit is present in us and is part of who we are. And what else do we use water for? Can you tell me? We're drinking the water, so baptism is kind of we take God into our lives. And what else? You can swim in it, so we're surrounded by God's love. And what else do you do with water? You wash with it, that's right. And, and we shower with it. So when we wash with water, it's like our hands get a fresh start, don't they? And our lives are like that that we get cleaned up and a fresh start every day because of God's love for us. Yeah. And we can fall in the water sometimes, but you know what? Even when we fall, God loves us just as we are. Awesome. We are going to sing a special baptismal hymn, A Little Child the Savior Came, and at that point I invite Moms and dads and the new babies who are going to be baptized to come forward and join me and godparents as well. So Donna, who is from our pastoral care committee in the church, is going to present the names for those who are to be baptized. On behalf of the congregation of South Shore United Church, I present the following persons for initiation into the body of Christ through the sacrament of baptism. Elsie Mary Stetson, child of Tobin and Ellen, and I present to you Harley Renee Francis, child of Brett and Kesha. Baptism is a public declaration of faith and trust in God. So we are going to ask you who have brought your children to profess your faith by responding to these questions. Do you believe in God and in God's love? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that God is made known to us in Jesus of Nazareth, who lived and died and lives again? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that God by the Spirit is active in our world to strengthen and direct us? If so, answer, I do. And will you do your best to provide Christian homes for your children that they may grow in faith, learn to live by trust in God, become faithful in public worship, and later seek to make their own profession of faith? If so, answer, I will, God being my helper. Now, I need a land and Florence, there you guys are, and Felix, will you three love your brother Harley and help him to know God's love? If so, say, yes, I will. Awesome. Can you say that too? Yes, I will. Give me a thought. Awesome. Thank you. 
and Gus and Lou, will you love your sister Elsie and help her to know God's love by loving her? Say, yes, I will. Awesome. Thank you. And now we're going to ask Godparents over here. We have Janelle and Bethany. We have Chelsea and Cameron. And we ask, as we give thanks for you as Godparents, we ask you, do you accept the responsibility to support these families so that Elsie and Harley may be surrounded by a loving, supportive community of family and friends. Will you do your best to live a life of Christian example and nurture Elsie and Harley in faith? If so, answer, I will, God being my helper. And we're going to ask all of our Christian friends here, are you prepared to receive Harley and Elsie in Christ's name, even as we have been received. Will you commit yourselves to support these families with your constant love, your wholesome example, your Christian teaching, and faithful prayer? If so, please say, we are willing, God being our helper. We are willing, God being our helper. And we're going to say together words of faith that are projected for us, it is called a new creed. Let us speak these words of faith together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone, thanks be to God. We are a people of water, and hidden back here is some special water that I am going to pour into the bowl and use it for our baptism. So I'm gonna sneak in here. Let's listen to the sound of the water. The water is a gift from God, and we say, thank you, God, for the gift of water. Because water was there when the world was first created, and God's Spirit helped all things to grow and to be made. And God's Spirit is part of us. God says, come to me. I am the living water. And so we ask God to bless this water with which God has blessed the world that God's spirit may be strong in Harley and Elsie. For we trust God is with us as we gather under the sign of water. Let's start with Elsie here. Hi, Elsie sweetie. Mary, right, Elsie Mary. Hello there, sweetheart. Elsie Mary, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. With the sign of the cross, I mark you as Christ's own forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, I declare that Elsie Mary has been received into the Holy Catholic Church, the family of God. And that means the whole universal church. So, I'm going to bring her down to show her off to everybody. There, so everybody can see her. Yes. See, this is your family. This is your family of God. Yeah. So welcome this wonderful me new member. There we go. So 
Oh, we pray that God's blessing will be strong in Elsie, that God's face will shine upon her, God's kindness will shine through her, and God's love will always be with her. Amen. There you go, sweetie. Back to Mama. And what is the name of this child, huh, sweetie? Carly Renee Francis. Okay. There we go. So, Harley Renee, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And with the sign of the cross, we mark you as Christ's own forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, I declare that Harley Renee has been welcomed into the household of God, the Holy Catholic Church, and the family of God. We're going to bring him down. Can you sing? Hi. Yeah. We're going to let him be welcome too. This is Harley, everyone. Yeah. Can you say hi to Harley? There. We welcome him into our family. There, lots to look at here, isn't there? Yeah. See him? He sees you all, don't you? So we bless Harley as well and pray that God's spirit will be strong in him, that God's love will surround him, and that God's kindness will shine through him. We give thanks for all that Harley brings to our world and all that Elsie brings as well. And we invite you as a congregation to welcome these new members of our church family. There are words of welcome that you say together. We welcome you joyfully and reverently as members of our family, the family of God, we offer ourselves to be your siblings in Christ. May we all grow in full, to full humanity as we see it in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Donna's going to say some more special words. We light a candle for Elsie and one for Harley. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give That's glory okay. to God. Amen. And Godparents, we're going to give, since you've got your hands full, and Cameron, so you get to hold that light, and every year you can light that light to remember the light and gift of each of your children special and you can give one to Elsie so we have special certificates and special books that are given to them and that one is for Harley family so everybody gets to go back to their seats for this time, and you can blow out the candles and save them for the next time.
something here, and what does it say? It says joy. And our stories today focus on joy. And I want to help us think about how we have joy in our lives. The first letter is the letter J, right? So the letter J reminds us of Jesus and we are just like Jesus because we are all children of God. That's what we celebrated today, didn't we? In baptism, we remembered we are all just like Jesus. We are all special children of God, and God loves each one of us. So that makes us happy to know that we are loved. What's this letter in the middle? It's the letter O. For all the rest of you to see, it's the letter O. And O reminds us that when we help each other, then that increases joy and happiness. What did Mary do when she went to visit Elizabeth? If she stayed for three whole months, do you think she just sat there and kicked up her feet and didn't do anything? No. no. What would she likely have done? Yeah. Help with the baby. She might have helped with Elizabeth's baby if the baby was born then. And what do we like to do each day? Nom, 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 nom. We like to eat, don't we? Yes. And so, if we're going to eat, we need somebody who will help us to get food ready and then to clean up afterwards, right? And so, Mary helped her cousin Elizabeth, helped her with meals, helped her to clean, and helped with all kinds of things. But Elizabeth also helped Mary because she cheered Mary on. She said, you are special. God has chosen you. And so they helped each other. So when we help each other, we find more joy. What's my last letter? Who can tell me what that last? It's the letter Y. And what did Mary say? When the angel said, will you have God's baby and accept this gift? Yes. yes. Mary said yes. So when we say yes to God, because God makes each one of us a gift for the world, we each are able to do special things. Some of us play music beautifully, and that brings joy to other people. Some people work on the sound or greet at the door or help with various things. I wonder, what are some of the gifts that you bring to the world? What are some things that are special in you? Can you help me think of that? What are you special? What's special in each of you? You have love in you. So that is something that you can share. Does anybody else have something special? How do you... Yeah. My heart. Your heart is special. And what's in you? Playing with my family. Playing with your family. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bella? Personality. Personality. Awesome. Yes. We each have very unique personalities that help each other, help the world be a better place. So to add to joy, I want you to remember today that we are just like Jesus. We are all children of God. When we help each other, the world is better and we each feel better. And when we say yes to how God has made us, to the beautiful person we each are, then that helps joy be felt all around the world. Now, I actually have some of these sheets that you folks can color over the next little while as we get ready for communion. Would you like to share around those sheets? And I need some help to share the crayons around. So if you can pass those around. You want one of those? How about you take them down to the back 
and anybody that wants to share some, they can share them around. We remember that when we feed the tender flame of joy, every time we share who we are and what we have. So we dedicate everything that you offer in your lives, all that was offered on the offering plate as people came in, as we share in a moment of prayer. Draw us into your light, O God, and warm our spirits by your soft and mighty glow. Illumine our lives that we may nurture joy in what we speak and share. We give all that we have and ask you to bless our gifts that we may share our joy with the world. For this we pray. Amen. We come to our time of communion and we invite all of you to listen for hope in the wonderful sound of voices shared around us. This is hope. And we seek peace as we come to this place knowing that all of us are welcome here. This is a place where we can find rest for our hearts filled with love and all that we need. For this is a table of Jesus. It is not a table of any particular denomination. So come one and all to share, for you are welcome here. Let us sing together, O come all ye faithful, our communion hymn. Please be seated as we continue with our communion prayers, and I invite you to respond in the parts that are in bold print. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to offer thanks and praise. Holy One, you shaped creation. You placed your grace within us. Your song of hope has rung out from ancient days, beckoning us to listen and join in. A young woman named Mary opened her heart to your song. She heard the promise that you would give birth. She heard the promise that this child would transform the world, and she believed. She said yes to you. In the stillness of this Advent season, we wait and prepare as our hearts echo an ancient cry, O come, O come, Emmanuel. We prepare for Emmanuel, God with us, for we remember how this child, born in a stable, lived a life of healing, mercy, and wisdom. We remember a special meal shared with friends. Gathering them together, Emmanuel spoke with boundless love in the blessing of the bread. Emmanuel asked them to share the bread amongst them, to remember the bread of life. In the blessing of the cup, 
Emmanuel asked them to share the cup of promise. Then Emmanuel asked that all of us always remember. We remember your life, your words, your love. As we share the bread and the cup, strengthen our hope in the promises of this season and give us courage to live in the way of peace. Amen. As we have broken the bread, we remember that God is with us. And because of COVID and various infectious things at this time, for those who are visiting, you get a grape and a cracker, and the crackers, crackers are gluten-free to respect those of differing needs. So we share these gifts of God with the people of God. Thanks be to God. go yeah yeah here does the choir oh yes yeah yeah oh and Fred <laughs> go that way enough, I think. Where are you folks? There we go. Okay, you guys can be seated, yeah. As we look at all of the separate pieces of bread, we remember that through God's love, we are made one people, one family of God. So we take and we eat our crackers, our bread, with thanks. As we lift the cup, we remember God's love poured out through baptism, God's spirit that flows through us, 
And so we take the grape, and as it spurts in our mouth, we remember God fills us with joy. Let us take and eat and be thankful. It really filled me up. Let's say a prayer after communion together. <laughs> Gracious God, this meal is <clears throat> just with love. Filling our hearts. May you bless all creation through us. We humbly pray. Let us go forth to be a people of joy, for we are just like Jesus and God loves each one of us. Let us go to share who we are and build that joy in the world. Let us sing together a blessing. You shall go out with joy. <clears throat>